Oh, look at that pregnant belly there. So ready to pop. You guys, Anna is having a baby. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that. You can see I don't have any makeup on. And what does that mean, Anna? We're filming a treatment. We are filming a treatment. I'm back at Pure Dermatology to see Dr. Nina Desai. She's a board certified dermatologist in Manhattan Beach, California. You guys know Dr. Nina Desai. I see her all the time. I love her. She is one of my favorites. We've had her here on the channel. And I am getting clear and brilliant done again. I did this a year ago. She wanted me to keep up with these treatments, but I'm traveling back and forth and it's really hard for me to keep up with it because I really just want to see Nina and be consistent with her. But the timing is going to work out now where I can get this one done. And if she wants me to, I can actually get it done again in another few weeks. And then maybe a few weeks after that, I think I've got the timing perfect. So we're going to go ahead and get my Clear and Brilliant done. And I'm also going to have Dr. Nina Desai answer all of your questions because there were so many questions last time. So she's actually going to answer questions right now while I'm numbing. While Nina is numbing my face, because this can take a little while, we're going to go ahead and answer some of the questions. We actually have a lot of questions here that you guys are asking. And the first one is, why is melasma so oh stubborn? Oh my gosh, that is a million dollar question, right? So melasma is so stubborn because there are so many factors that actually are in play when melasma, you know, kind of comes about. There's intrinsic factors, there's extrinsic factors, and there's a lot of things that are out of our control. So that's why it's so stubborn. So we all know that melasma is exacerbated by the sun and by hormones. That's kind of like the two most common things that people talk about. But there are so many times in our life where we're going through these hormonal changes and we don't even know. So those are times where, you know, the melasma seems like it's unpredictable because we don't really know what is triggering it internally. Basically, we just can't control it. There's just so many triggers. There are so many triggers. Yeah. And heat too is a big trigger. Some women who are athletes, yeah. who are exercising a lot, who are in hot yoga, things of that nature, you know, that is going to be one of the things that really can trigger your melasma also. Well, you know, I've even noticed because it's so hot in Miami, even though yeah. I'm like avoiding the sun all yeah. the time, I've noticed that it gets so hot there yeah. and humid that I just overheat. Like yeah. I'm just hot all the time. Absolutely, and that is not great for melasma. How many sessions are needed for full results and do you need to go back in a year? Unfortunately, the end result is gonna be when you're happy. So my minimum kind of recommendation is to start with a series of four treatments and we're gonna space those about a month apart. But everyone's melasma is different and everyone's life is different. So during the course of your treatments, you know, you have to be really diligent about your sunscreen and about avoiding your potential triggers, which sometimes can be hard. So I always say that melasma so is gonna be one of those conditions where it's basically like two steps forward, one step back. So we have to always know that there is going to be maintenance. There's unfortunately no cure for melasma. There's no one treatment that's going to take it all away. It's going to be, you know, a work in progress. There are some individuals who are lucky and their melasma is responsive to a certain event that happened in their life. And then they treat it and it fades and it does not come back. And sometimes melasma related to pregnancy can be that way. If an individual has never had melasma before, they get pregnant it pops up and they don't have any more babies, then it can clear for an extended period of time. That is unfortunately not the usual case. Mm. So there is a lot of maintenance that goes into treating a client with melasma. I see my melasma clients sometimes two times a month and we're constantly tweaking the routine, altering certain treatments that we're gonna do. So there's a lot of upkeep with it. How is Clear and Brilliant for darker skin? So Clear and Brilliant is actually one of my go-to treatments for darker skin. It's a low energy laser, so super safe on all skin types. And really, you don't run the risk of making your melasma worse. You don't run the risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. For certain clients, I will pre-treat and I will post-treat with a hydroquinone when we're doing these types of lasers. But overall, this is a very, very safe treatment for all skin types. So it's really important when you're seeking out a provider for Clear and Brilliant or any laser to look for someone who's really familiar with the settings on the laser and someone who feels really comfortable treating your skin type because not all skin types are the same. And I'll, I'll throw out there one of the reasons why you constantly see me go to Dr. Nina Desai for my melasma treatments is because I feel like she truly understands skin of color in general and I know that even like as an Asian person people don't think about our skin as skin of color because sometimes we're more uh, fairer toned, but we are prone to melasma. Like we can, we can definitely produce melanin. And a lot of the times it shows itself as like hyperpigmentation yeah. and discoloration. So I see Nina because 
I feel like I can trust her with my skin tone. This is a good question. Is Clear and Brilliant better than IPL? I personally do not use IPL for my melasma patients. It's too much heat and it really does run the risk of making your melasma worse, especially when you're doing an aggressive treatment. IPL, BBL, amazing for sunspots, sun damage, and certain other types of hyperpigmentation, but not my go-to for melasma. I think that's like where people don't understand the difference between hyperpigmentation and sunspots and stuff yes. versus melasma. Absolutely. Melasma is a very reactive condition. So when you have a reactive condition that's reactive to heat and energy, you have to be very careful with which device you choose. You may have people who've come to see you or talk to you, say, I had this laser treatment and it made my melasma worse. That is not uncommon with certain devices. Yeah. That actually leads to a question um, that we, it kind of is what we were talking about. She says, I'm Asian and I've been told to stay away from lasers because it makes melasma worse. So yeah, that is most of the time what someone has heard. But the issue is what laser? So for me, I'm very comfortable with certain lasers on all skin types with melasma. It has to be the right laser, the right person. And again, if it's a deeper laser, I may prep the skin or pre-treat the skin with high doses of hydroquinone before and after. I'm really, really like kind of rigorous about my post-care and my pre-care to make sure that there's no complications from any treatment. How's your face? I'm so numb. I can, I can't move right here. Like only my lips are moving. Do you see this? Like I have no expression here. <laughs> it was kind of normal to me. Does it look normal? <laughs> Probably doesn't feel normal. It does it not feel normal. normal. And it's, I always like freak out because the numbing cream always makes me have red spots. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go though. I need is like, you're ready. <laughs> So one of the questions is, does it hurt? But I don't think they realize that you numb the face yes. first, right? Yeah, so it's very well tolerated, really clear and brilliant. It shouldn't cause too much discomfort. It shouldn't have too much pain. Very, very well tolerated, especially because we numb with topical numbing for 30 minutes before the treatment. I'll be the judge of this, guys, mm -hmm. in just a bit. I actually don't think I would be back for this if I hurt lots of it. If it was too uncomfortable. So I guess we should talk about why I'm doing clear and brilliant again versus other treatments, because there were other ideas you had for my melasma, right? Absolutely. So some of my favorite treatments for melasma are the low energy lasers like the Clear and Brilliant, but also chemical peels. Chemical peels are some of my favorite for melasma because some of the melasma sits in the top layer of the skin and with the chemical peel, you can really swath off that, you know, dead skin, but also where some of that pigment lies. So you get a lot more of that instant gratification mm -hmm. sometimes from a chemical peel. So I love chemical peels for treating that epidermal melasma. We were going to do Cosmolon, right? Because we oh, yes. to do Cosmolon, but... Yes. I'm running into issues because I can't have my face out of commission. Yes, so certain chemical peels, in particular, the ones that are a little bit more aggressive can leave you with some downtime. So the chemical peel that I wanted to do for Susan is the Cosmolon MD, which is the strongest strength of Cosmolon peel. And that would leave her out of commission for a couple of weeks. Her skin would be red and peely for about two weeks after we applied the peel and then really sensitive for a full month. So there is definitely some downtime involved with a Cosmolon peel. Yeah, so we're going clear and brilliant instead. Yes, which has very little downtime. You'll notice that today your skin's a little bronze. Tomorrow you'll wake up, it'll feel like sandpaper. If you wanted to put makeup on, you could absolutely put makeup on and you could easily cover it. Okay. So this is a dermatologist's version of hypochlorous acid. This is laser sin, dermal spray. We've been using this for years and years to really prep the skin before any laser treatments, before injectables. It just gets all the dirt, all the bacteria off and it really does make the skin nice and sterile. Oh, nice. Um, does it help with redness too? Like sensitivity? Yeah, all? so this can help with sensitivity as well. Okay, let's let's see this go onto my face. Okay. So we pressure is normal with the numbing, um, but you shouldn't feel much pain or discomfort. You just feel pressure. Yeah. So, so today we're doing the Clear and Brilliant Permea. So the Clear and Brilliant Permea is a 1927 wavelength laser, which is going to target pigmentation on the skin. The Clear and Brilliant also has a 1440 wavelength. This one is more for collagen stimulation, for texture, and for, you know, tone, pore size, all that good stuff. So there's the option to do what's called a dual treatment, where we do like half for pigment and half for tone and texture and pore size, or we can do one versus the other. So there's a lot of versatility with this treatment. The treatment process basically is we have a laser that has this little rollerball device and we are going to do multiple passes over the skin. And what you're going to notice is 
the skin will get a little bronze after we've done multiple passes. How's the comfort level? Good. Good. You, uh, you're right. I don't feel it at all. The only time I feel it is like a very quick, like on the edge of my hairline where yes. there's no numbing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, I'm aware of it, but it, you barely feel it. Okay. Um, so on average, how much does this cost? Because you've got to do like a package to see a difference, right? Yes, you do. I always recommend this as a minimum series of about four. The average cost of this treatment is somewhere between $400 to $500 a treatment. So probably more expensive in places like Los Angeles. Yeah, right? absolutely. Geography does play a role in that for sure. Is this safe for, obviously we wouldn't tell pregnant women they should do it, but how about breastfeeding? Yeah, so I definitely can treat women who are breastfeeding. I use a slightly different compound for numbing when I treat women who are breastfeeding. But once you know you're not pregnant anymore, I feel very comfortable treating your skin. Are you more sensitive post? You post are for sure. So it might hurt a little bit. It might hurt a little bit more, but this treatment in general is very well tolerated and not super uncomfortable. So I think you would be absolutely fine. So someone was asking specifically about a nurse, but I think they just made the provider. Um, if you deal with melasma, like how do you how do you like discuss that with somebody to just guarantee that they're not going to overdo it on your skin and, and make the melasma worse? In terms of getting this treatment done? Yeah. So, you know, obviously going to a provider that treats a lot of melasma is extremely important because as we discussed before, there's certain devices that I would never use on a patient with melasma, depending on, you know, how reactive it is, but also making sure that you have a good at-home regimen on board. So for me, when the skin's here, healing, regardless of if you have melasma or not, you are that much more susceptible to hyperpigmentation, to redness on the skin. So I make it a point to really go over with my clients the post-care regimen. So we are going to be super diligent about our sunscreen when the skin is healing. So for the next week and beyond, when your skin is healing from a treatment, you really want to make sure that you're not going out in the sun, hats, lots of sunscreen, reapplying your sunscreen every two to three hours, making sure you're super covered is going to be very important. Having your antioxidants on board, so like your vitamin C, your vitamin E, your ferulic acid, things that are, are going to play with your sunscreen and really protect the skin from any photo damage are going to be really important when your skin is healing from a treatment. We know that it's treating melasma, but like how about other types of hyperpigmentation, also even scarring? Yeah, so you can use this device to treat other types of hyperpigmentation. So sun damage, photo damage, I can use this device to treat that as well. When I'm treating scarring, depending on the type of scar, I may switch out my 1927 for my 1440 hand piece, or if it's a really deep scar, a hypertrophic scar, an atrophic scar, meaning there's loss of collagen in that area, or there's like some depth involved to the scar, I might pick a more aggressive device. How about when it comes to acne, like pitting, like the pits, pitted mm -hmm. scars? So if you wanted to use this device to treat pitted acne scars, I would use the 1440 wavelength. But personally, I actually use other devices to treat pitted acne scars. And depending on how deep the pits are or how much downtime my client does not mind having, I use either halo lasers or profractional laser resurfacing if they've got a little bit more downtime. Will it make my pores look smaller? Yes, this can help with pore size as well. So we're stimulating collagen with this laser, so that's gonna improve the appearance of the pores. So now we're gonna treat Susan's neck, and the benefit of treating on the neck is that you're also gonna even out some of that sun damage pigmentation, which everyone always has a little bit of sun damage on their neck and chest. And we are also gonna work on the texture of the skin, so the fine lines. So for this treatment, I'm actually gonna do what's called a dual treatment. I'm gonna do half the treatment with 1927 and the other half with the 1440. So two different wavelengths to give multiple benefits. That's where my crepiness is, right there in the center. Mm -hmm. So after this treatment, you're gonna be really gentle with your skin for the next week. You are gonna use only gentle cleansers, moisturizers, you can use plain vitamin C serums, and moisturizers and sunscreens. So no alpha hydroxys, no beta hydroxys, no retinoids this week, okay? okay. Yep, I already stopped them actually. Perfect. So, so that definitely hurts a little bit more. Yeah, so the 1440 wavelength is going to be a little bit more uncomfortable, so that's totally normal for you to feel that way. Yeah, not unbearable, but like definitely felt it more. After like 
how chilled the other one was. Like that was like, whoa, okay, I feel this one. A little spicier. Mm -hmm. All done. That's so bright. <laughs> I'm just gonna spray you with some thermal spring water to so keep your eyes shut. Mm -hmm. So with melasma, obviously you wanna make sure that you cool the skin down and that there's not a lot of heat built up. What do you think of like the ice rollers after a treatment? They're great. The one thing I always caution is just make sure it's clean when you're using the ice rollers. Mm -hmm. So after a laser treatment, especially one that you know kind of penetrates a little deeper into the skin you always want to make sure everything you're putting on your skin is really clean so this i'm putting on a, the elastin skin nectar which is a great healing balm really helps to allow the skin to heal even faster peptide technology so great for post-treatment so next i'm putting on the cyclophate the event cyclophate which is a little bit thicker and is more of a barrier repair cream, which is just gonna help keep the skin intact and hydrated and protect it. So all of this bronzing will be gone by tomorrow. Mm. And you'll feel like the skin is a little sandpaper. Mm -hmm. So you will notice it. Nobody else really will probably notice it. I've noticed that darker skin will stay sandpapery for a little bit longer. So you might have the sandpaper texture to your skin for about a week. Mm. But again, it's pretty easy to cover with makeup. And then because you've noticed that your melasma is quite active right now, I will, in about a week, have you start back on a hydroquinone cream. In a week? In a week. Okay. So you'll let the skin heal this week, and then next week, you'll start with using a hydroquinone. Can I get um, a facial done next week? Next week, you can, yeah. Okay. So this is a mineral tinted sunscreen. Right now, I'm putting the elastin hydrogen on. So she's got that mineral protection, but she's also got the tinted protection, which is the iron oxides that are going to help protect against the visible light. We did it. Yes. <laughs> this is what my face looks like. It looks like I got a very intense sunburn, right? She forgot to wear sunscreen. Which I would never. I'm wearing sunscreen right now. But look at the neck. The neck root is really in a very even redness to it. And then you can see my face, especially the cheeks. That is some red redness. Don't mind my hair. I put it up so you can see my neck. So post-treatment. That's how red my skin is. Let's see how red it is over the next few days. I'll keep you guys updated. Morning, I just rolled out of bed and I brushed my teeth, splashed some water on my face and put on some sunscreen. And uh, it's because I'm just about to go walk my dog. But I wanted to show you my skin and close out this video because I got this done last Thursday and today is Saturday. I'm just a little over a week out from getting Clear and Brilliant done. That was just one treatment with Dr. Nina Desai. And you can see where my skin is at. Don't mind my eyes. My allergies have been just raging this season. You can hear my congestion and everything. I've just been like dealing with the worst allergies, but I want to show you my skin. Again, I have sunscreen on my face and it's drying down right now, so I probably look a little shiny. In my opinion, I feel like I can see a much bigger difference than I expected from my first treatment. It looks really good. There's obviously still a lot more discoloration that I'm dealing with and everything, but I feel like it's really looking good. It's not feeling sandpapery anymore. That lasted for about a week completely like seven whole days by like the last day or two I was just only feeling that sandpapery feeling like around my neck and around the edges of my face but this looks really good this is where my skin is at after one treatment I'm gonna wait another month I'm actually gonna get another treatment done and the hope is over the next few months I'll actually get three clear and brilliant sessions done because usually I only have a chance to go in and get one done and then like a whole year will pass and you know we won't see the true difference in my skin if I don't get the full three treatments done. This is how my skin looks right now after one treatment. I'm pretty happy with it. Clear and brilliant. One treatment. I didn't take you through the whole healing process because I have a whole other video from last year where I did that. If you have questions though, other questions that Nina didn't answer, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll probably do a little checkup after the third treatment and I'll be posting about it on social media as well as it's getting done. So I hope this was helpful. Follow Dr. Nina Desai, by the way, on social media. She is wonderful, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to skincare. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok. 
I'm at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.